Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. And of course, he has to start apologizing. So oh, sorry, boys. I had the crash uh, of my play, private uh, plane okay. in Marbella. Are you ready, Santa? Yeah. Uh, I doubt he's going to jump on. Uh, let's see. But today's topic, we're going to talk about networking, importance of networking both in the game and out the game, whether it be football, any walk of life, and how important it is because your network is your network. Come on, yeah? So, Patrick, start off from home. What's your experience in networking? How important it is to you? So I think the key before networking is to improve yourself so you're worth contacting with. If you're Mm. nobody... And to contact somebody that is higher in value than you, of course he's gonna blank you. Maybe he's he he's a kind person and he can give you some advice, but most likely he will just blank you. Step number one is to develop yourself so you're mm-hmm. worth something to other people. Mm-hmm. And then once you do that, I wouldn't still network with people, I would first develop some experiences. Mm-hmm go and experience life so you have something to talk about then when you have those two you can start networking with people and how Mm. to do that you can network with people for example by going to the gym and keep in mind that uh, if you go to low-end gym you might meet low-end people but if you go to high-end gym you might meet high-end people i i 100 agree um Always think about what you have to offer before you think about what they can offer to you. At the end of the day, if you are a high-end person, just know, A, they're hella busy. B, understand what they had to go through to get to where they are. And C, don't set expectations in terms of what they can give you. Focus on how you can serve them and then they can maybe open up to you. Can, that's how you can be different to other people that are networking with higher end people. Because other people that network to high end people, they're focusing on, oh yeah, can you help me? Da, 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 da. But with you approaching to them, going to be like, how can I help you? They'll be like, okay. Uh, can I volunteer? Can I shadow for a month with you to learn and understand? And you don't have to pay me. To, to, I just want to learn with me. They're going to go, mm, that's different. Never had that one before. That guy's committed. That guy is disciplined. That guy is willing to go um miles to kind of get the information needed and stuff like that. Because me and you both know that like, you can work hard you can do all of that stuff, but if it's not directed in the right place or in the right environment, you won't flourish. How many people you see that are hard working but they don't get anywhere in life? Do you know what I mean? And they work an honest job type of thing, and they put food on the table, but they're not in the, they're not they're not channeling that energy and that effort into right places, into right people, into right the networks, in the right environment. And that right having the right network will guide you because you can use their experiences to kind of understand how they got there and they can help you get there. Yes, so as you said, uh, you need to find your environment. And in this environment, you will find the high value individuals. It's important that you understand the people you want to connect with because mm. obviously if you want to start your own business, you will not go to a badminton club to learn how to play badminton. Mm. You will go to some business events. You will go to, you will actually 
do a cold approach and just uh, speak to an owner of a restaurant, for example. Mm. So uh, I would say that uh, you need to choose your environments where you want to connect. Mm. And then also understand that you probably need to spend money. So uh, if you want to get into rooms full of people that can help you accelerate mm. in your career, you need to invest in a seat of, of the table. Once you're there, as I said, you need to have something to, to say. You need to be interesting. You need to offer something to other people. It's common that uh, there is a saying that people say that uh, you need to offer s some free service to other person and then maybe he he will agree to help you. But uh, mm. if you if you think other way, the people that are already on the top, they can already afford somebody that is world class. So why they would mm. hire you to, to do something for them. Mm. So as I said, uh, just develop yourself and uh, get into the high rooms, uh, get into the expensive rooms so you have something to talk about. 100%. And like I say, like, why would anyone invest in you if you don't invest in yourself? As there's another thing people get wrong, they're like, oh yeah, if I get this job or if I do this and I get in, they'll invest into me and put money into me. And I'm like, why are you always relying on them to do the work for you? Why don't you just do that for yourself? Why don't you take control of yourself and over your life? Why don't you get a head start and start that investment so you are at least slightly more appealing than your peers um, to stand out a little bit more? Why don't you develop that X factor in your in your um, personality and in, in your salesman skills or in the football pitch whatever it is and that doesn't mean uh, you have to go for the owner you can network with people that already work there you can network with people that um that have other roles in that work facility you can same thing with football you can network with players you can network with their physio with their snc coach how many times we've we've worked with so many S and Chiefs clubs and they'll be like, oh, actually, this club is looking for players here and there, John Esmus. How many times? But because we're in this higher end um, environment, there's so many times where you if you put yourself out there, it's part of the manifestation. It will happen. Do you know what I mean? Like by choice and by chance, by your choices you're putting and creating chances in your favour. So in that sense, what I would say is like, just put yourself out there. Like if you see so many of these top tip top footballers um throwing three hundred sixty five days and stuff like that. And they're just walking up to a club be like, can I get a trial? Can I get a trial? And they just get a trial all the time. Yeah, they might not sign, but sometimes they'll be like, okay, you're actually good, but we don't need, let's say, a sentiment. But, I, I, but because we recorded the games and I now have contacts, I'm going to send you to this, this, this club in the lower division, but we'll keep an eye on you. It can happen, do you know what I mean? Um, but again, it won't happen unless you put yourself out there. And this is why networking is so key. And this is what I think a lot of people are lacking. Um, give him that extra push. And this is how you can create your own luck, to be honest. Um, I don't know, it's a numbers game. The more you try, the more you find out. The more you find out, the more likely the chance will go in your favour. Yeah, I would also give some real life example from myself how I got in touch with the English national team mental coach. So, because I I'm already, I was already an interesting person, a guy reached out to me to ask, uh, ask for a feedback uh, on his business. So he started his business. He saw that, uh, that I'm, uh, I'm just interesting person. And he, it was of this business was football uh, oriented. And uh, he asked me for the feedback. So I gave him the very nice feedback that uh, that helped him very much in the business. And he said, uh, you know what? Uh, my good friend 
is a Premier League nutritionist. Why don't you contact him and maybe he can sort you out with some clubs or maybe you can just work with him or maybe you can even use him as a mentor because uh, he played uh, professionally in the Premier League. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. So I'm contacting the former Premier League player and uh, he's becoming my mentor. He ended up working six months for me as my nutritionist. And uh, once we had a talk about uh, how can I improve my mentality, like how can I be better in terms of uh, dealing with pressure, taking the opportunities. And he said, you know what, uh, I know a guy that is working in English national team and he's a mental uh, coach. Why don't you contact him? He gives me the number. I contact the guy and... Uh, I ended up uh, being in touch with uh, with the mental coach of uh, English national team. Mm. So it's like uh, every person you know might know some somebody that could take you to someone even that you would I... not not even imagine that it's possible to get in touch with. Mm. I would say I'm being serious. You're always two contacts away. From on the person that you look up to. I'm a firm believer that the amount of times where like, for example, um my my family knows a family that his son plays for uh Al Nasser. And Ronaldo plays for Al Nasser now. But I know the guy bro. Do you know what I mean? But I know the guy through through my family. So I'm like that's what I mean, like, you're always two contacts away from... It's the same thing. Um, in lockdown, I was speaking to a few people. And then, obviously, lockdown, you can't um, train outside with groups and stuff like that. But, obviously, these footballers got together and they're like, we need to train. Even professional ones, they're like, we need to train. We'll go to this cage. We'll go to this football pitch. It's a bit hidden. It's behind the building. We'll just climb over and we'll just train. And then we'll train, we'll train, we'll train. And then we're, because we're training, we're getting better. They're like, oh, yeah, why are you not playing for anyone? Or oh, why do you need contact? Yeah, you need data. Like, yeah, yeah, if you can. They're like, okay, give you the contact. And I'm like, oh, yeah, um, you're religious? I'm like, yeah, I'm religious. And it goes, yeah, um, there's some guy that, uh, that basically does like a, a Zoom call program like two times a week for these religious football players and stuff like that. I was like, oh, cool. I'm not jumping on Zoom call. But my guy plays for Man United. I'm not going to say who. My guy plays for Man United. I'm on a Zoom call. He's like, hey, he's my contact number. Next minute, he goes to Swansea. Does madness. He goes, yeah, I know your friend. He used to be a, a champion. This and that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, next minute, but in the Zoom call again, talking about life and all that. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's a contact, da, 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 this and that. And I, at the time, this was like before Brexit. So like, I was like, oh, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go this country and this country. And then obviously Brexit happened, so I couldn't go to these trials. But it goes to show you, like, unless you put yourself out there, you're never going to know the connection and the network that's meant for you. And this is why you need to be kind with people. You need to develop social skills in, in order to network. You need to develop good communication skills. You need to have be open-minded and understanding of different cultures, different ethnicity, different backgrounds, different environment. You learn how to talk a little bit differently for each type of people to, to accommodate to different type of characters in life which will work, work in your favour um, because in football, in a club, you come across different characters, different environment, different people. So this is why I'm a firm believer. If you're very good at that, you'll, you'll end up being a very good teammate. Now, how many times I've seen players at a top, top level where they're not playing, but they're on mega contract just because they're a good teammate, they're a good... Um, team environment good for the changing room blah 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 we've seen it too many times bro. there's loads like that in Man City um, but yeah it's a very it's a very underestimated um, skill 
that you can have on your tour. And that could possibly very much um, tip you over the edge to success. Let's say uh, you're a 18 year old in Fiji, based in Fiji. Mm. You don't speak English. You live in a small country. You don't know what to do. And you want to get into the big leagues. So uh, how would a 18 year old from Fiji go to these big leagues? Let me let me start, okay? I think first of all, he should he should develop himself, as we said, get physically strong, look good, develop some connections in Fiji, become mm -hmm. a little local superstar, mm -hmm. provide some value. Then it's important he learns English, because English is the language of communication in the world. So uh, he needs to develop English and then put himself out there. Put himself uh, on internet, put himself uh, out on uh, cold, cold reaches, for example, and try to connect with people that are higher than him. Little bit, maybe not much higher, but little bit higher uh, in the in the social, uh, social value scale. Mm. Step by step from being in Fiji, Maybe can maybe he can move out to Australia. Maybe mm. he's not good enough for Australia, but he can go to New Zealand. And mm. then from New Zealand, maybe he can move to Australia and then start mm. up his business. Mm. And uh, then he speaks perfect English. He has all the connections. He's in a big continent. And uh, that's yeah, that's an advice I would give to somebody that is from 18 year old from Fiji. Mm. Definitely. First, there's another thing a lot of people get wrong. They're delusional and they jump to, they take a, a bigger bite than they can chew. And like, they end up choking and failing all the time. Um, and that's because they didn't conquer where they are first. They didn't develop where they are first. They didn't um, become an asset where they are first. They didn't go through the struggle and the experience where they are first. So master your lane before jumping another lane. That's my first advice. And as you're doing that, obviously plant seeds out, out of where you are. Once you've done that and you're planting seeds and people are like, oh, oh. You say, that's interesting. Man, look, over that. look how he's changed in the last one year or two years. Look how I'm sure. Good work. And then somebody will be like, oh, good work. Somebody will comment. Oh, yeah. And then once you're on LinkedIn, social media, Instagram, Twitter and stuff like that, and you'll keep putting yourself out there, before you know it, you'll attract people that can benefit from your service. You'll attract people that could benefit from your knowledge. You'll attract people that could benefit from your network. And before you know it, because they benefited from you, they will help you out the end of help you out and return the favor to make sure you benefit from them. Don't want to sound uh, egotistic, but just look at me. Like I'm mm. a kid, I was 10 years old, a chubby kid in a small town outside Warsaw. Didn't speak mm. English, nothing. I was uh, basically playing FIFA and uh, playing football. That was just, just the only thing I was doing in my life. And here, 15 years later, I'm here speaking to, to a guy from Liverpool on a podcast in English language. So, uh, like, everything is possible. You just need to step by step develop yourself. 100%. Same with me. I came into this country not knowing anything <laughs> never kicked a ball i started football when i was like nine ten so late but i realized hey if i'm the type of friends that i want to have they all play football and um, football is such a it was so it's such a joy i was like what's this sport i need to do this sport uh, what is this so much fun uh, but I don't have the skills and I'll start developing it, developing my football, developing my social skills, developing my uh, communication skills, developing my English, developing being street smart as well. Um, little things like that. 
Um, and then once you, you learn and you force yourself, then if you want it bad enough, you'll do the work. And that's necessary to get you there. A lot of people don't want it bad enough, I'll be honest. Um, so you need to get out of that. But same as we said last podcast, you need to get out of yourself being in that instant gratification to more of a delayed gratification mindset all the time. And it's part, that's part of networking. It's You're going to have a lot of patience. You're going to get a lot of no's before you get a, a yes. But you just got to keep sending, keep sending before you know it. As the years go by, you'll go from sending 1,000 emails on one yes to 100 emails on one yes because you're developing your value. You're developing your um expertise. You're developing an understanding how the market works. You're developing an understanding where you stand and where your market value. Where does your value stand? How do people perceive you? I don't know about you, Patrick, but I feel like networking is a humbling experience because you get to realise and understand where you stand in life, where your value is. If you're sending like 1,000, 2,000 emails and you only get one yes, you're pretty on the low end scale type of thing. So you need to understand, okay, what can I do to bring my value up? What can I do so I become more attractive to the market? What can I do to, um, so people will, will look at me a bit more um, and give me a chance? So it gets you questioning yourself and being more open-minded if you're an open-minded person. This is what I mean, like, networking is not for everyone. Some people don't have the patience. Some people are too arrogant. Some people, they try message a Man United scout. I'm like, listen, you know, he's not going to reply to you. Um, so yeah, you just gotta recognize where you stand, understand where you are, why you are where you are, and what you need to do to get out of that and increase your value. Um, and before you know it, the ratio and the chance will work in your favor. So let me tell you a cool story. I'm 16 year old, don't have any highlights uh, with myself. Just one minute video that I could just crop from some little footages, some bad quality, even me juggling the ball in the garden. But I created like a one minute highlight video and started sending this to every club in Europe. <laughs> I sent it to Manchester United, to Real Madrid, <laughs> to AC Milan. <laughs> Bro, once I sent them, I sent to, to even uh, Partizan Belgrade. And uh, and uh, I send it to England to all the uh, top uh, top teams uh, top four uh, leagues in England. Mm. And I got two replies. One reply was from Partizan Belgrade. They said, uh, "Oh, you contacted our <laughs> you contacted our basketball team. <laughs> Please send it the mail. <laughs> Here is the mail to the football <laughs> football academy." <laughs> And then the second reply I got was from Reading, the team in England from Reading. And the guy said, mm -hmm. Patrick, I appreciate that uh, in such a young age you reach out to me. I would like to give you a chance. Please come in this, uh, com come this and this date. And unfortunately, I couldn't go there because I got injured one week before going to ah. Reading. But uh, I actually got an opportunity from sending 10,000 emails to every mm. single club in Europe. Yeah. This is what I mean, like, this is what I was saying, like, yeah, you will get one reply, that weird one, where somebody will be like, ah, oh, do you know what, I will give them a chance. But like, like I say, the likelihood that happens is that one in 10 thousand yeah. something crazy. <laughs> uh, but like I said, the more you increase your chances, the more the ratio will be in your favour. And you just got to keep going and got to keep hustling and stuff like that. But there's a little... There's a bit of a dark truth to it. And I'll be honest. It's very easy to create a bad name for yourself. Very easy. And it can go left very quick, right? The more you create your network, if you're not increasing your value, people can be like, oh yeah, that guy is a scammer. 
That guy's not a real bowler. He's a scammer. Mm. Very quickly. And once you get that label, <laughs> people in football talk, bro. They always talk. Um, once they create that, like, oh, he's a bad egg, or um, he's a, uh, he's not, he's, uh, he's a fake footballer. Um, uh, he's a footballer wanna be. He's not. Once you create that label for yourself, it's very hard to remove it, because people talk all the time, um, and once people create that impression of you, it's like, and this is what I mean, like, you can't be networking for five, six, seven years. And you've not changed, or you've not created the value of yourself, or blah blah blah. You'll run out of contacts, run out of emails to send. If you're sending ten thousand emails in one year, by six, you'll send sixty, seventy thousand, a hundred thousand emails. You'll run out of contacts, bro. The people to to email, unless you email the new replacements or whatever. But the chances that the the, the replacement rate is very low compared to how many emails that you're sending. So just be careful with um, how many people you email and make sure you're of value um, first before you email them. Because once they be like, who's this guy? And you email them again, they'll be like, oh, it's a stack, a stack guy again. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, that's, the dark, that's the only dark truth that I would say about um, networking. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. One year ago, I had a very bad experience. It was a training camp in Poland. Yeah. And uh, I played uh, I played in a game as a centre-back. And uh, yeah. I played one of the worst first halves in my life. Bro, I scored an own goal. I tripped on the ball as well two times. <clears throat> very, very bad. And of course, uh, the everything was live stre- streamed with commentary. And uh, basically, the when I heard back uh, the game, the commentators were just making fun of me. They were saying that... <laughs> they were saying, like, please, uh, referee, end the, end the game because Patrick wants to forget <laughs> about this game as soon as possible. <laughs> and, bro, it was all, uh, like, top uh, top scouts, uh, top people from Poland was watching this game. Mm. And in, in, this, uh, in this period, I realized that uh, I have nothing to search for in Poland. I'm finished. Mm. So the only thing I could do is just... Go back to Norway. Fortunately, I have two two uh, citizenships, so I could go to Norway. I went to Norway and started my new life here, and it's mm. been fantastic <laughs> since then. Mm. That's what I mean by like you're you're obviously you're fortunate because you have two citizenship, but this is what I mean by like if you're not flourishing in your own, your own environment in your own network. And you feel you really feel like you're um you're of value. Then sometimes changing environment is the key factor to kind of as a catalyst to kind of re- reignite and restart your career type of thing, whether it be football or anything like that. Um, and have the awareness to be like, yeah, my my chapter here is finished. Yeah, my I know every place I go to be like, oh, you're that guy. Oh yeah, like it's it's annoying, but I'm now labelled. Oh, you're the Charles guy. What do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? You're the guy that keeps going to Charles everywhere. I'm like, oh my god. And then like yeah, the coach is like, you're actually a good player. Like, well, how come you're not playing? Like, how come you can't find a club? How come you're like no one's giving you a chance? I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, oh, I'd like to sign you, but. I don't at the minute. Um, it was like a conference club, and they went at the minute. The chairman doesn't want to take risk because last year we almost got relegated, so we need to get get um players with league experiences, players with good amount of minutes from last year, blah blah blah, and your fits and everything. But you still uh, you still need a bit more match sharpness, and um, but you're a very good player. Um, I will help you. Um, 
I'll give you a good reference. Any club, send them to me. I'll give them a good reference to you. And I'm about that. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then every club, they're like, you're the, you're the trialless guy. Oh, nah. Oh, you're the trialless guy. Oh, nah. Oh, you're the trialless guy. And I'm like, oh, my God. That part of it is my fault. Part of it is me not fitting the environment. And part of it, I need to realise, hey, maybe my chapter is finished. Like you said, maybe I need to kind of go somewhere else um, where I'm more appreciated in terms of my style of play, in terms of like um, whatever it may be. Because how can a coach from a higher league say I'm good enough or you just need that chance? But the coach in the lower, lower, lower league to say, ah, this guy, ah, he's, yeah, nah, it's not for me. Ah, he's too, he, he thinks he's big time. Nah, he does get crazy through balls. Or nah, um, he presses like a madman. We need to, we're not we're not a pressing team nah, like that. And that's when I realised nah, this year I've made a goal for myself to kind of find a new chapter and find a new environment to kind of reignite, restart uh, my career again. Don't get discouraged with the bad experiences you had. So like you put yourself out there, you had a bad, bad experience. Don't get attached to it. Mm. Like don't get high on highs and low on lows. Just mm. understand that you are a good player. You have your qualities and just stick with it. So everyone can have a bad day. Everyone can have a bad training. Everyone, everyone can have a bad game. I can give you an example that uh, it was 2018. I was uh, I was on the second team. I was on the bench in the second team of my club, playing in fifth division in Norway. So I wasn't even starting. And two weeks later, I, I was playing against Barnsley under 23s. So... Mm don't get attached to your current situations because it can change anytime like that mm -hmm. even your situation now yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you've a striker playing for the second team and now you're just now you signed for a pro team now so congratulations but that's like so that's that's what i'm saying you i have a strong belief in myself i really believe that i'm i'm the main guy i don't look at other people and I'm like, oh, I wish I was him. No, I'm the main character in my film. You motivated me. I need to get out of this country. <laughs> yeah, it but is I like feel, that. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like I've now quit. I'm on the coach and oh, you're a child. Bro, my heart sank. Okay, no, this is what Evan thinks of me. This is why no one's getting back to me anymore. This is why... I'm I'm starting to realize now I've got a label a little bit. Um, even Rio said it himself. Like he, in one league, he had a label as well. Um, so like I'm like, you know what? Go where you're appreciated. Go where you'll get seen. Go where you're wanted a little bit. And this is where like I told you, you know, I had so many guys messaging me to go to Australia and stuff like that. The second tier. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that, and I that no, because I was speaking to a few people, they were saying it's very hard to get out of that league unless you have a good agent and stuff like that. And that maybe, maybe something I need to consider this year. Um, but maybe it'll help me get to the national team and stuff like that because all games are recorded, you get stats, everything. So, um, may, maybe it's not a professional league, it's a semi pro league, but get stats, games recorded and stuff like that. And this year, especially seeing uh, certain TikTok guys just walking up to a club and stuff like that, maybe I'm like, do you know what? I'm going to do that this year as well. Because I did that a bit like that, just a little bit in Dubai. And I ended up training with three, four teams. I'm like, do you know what? Maybe there's a power in that. Because when I, when I, I saw that, I, I bet so many people have tried this and they don't get anywhere. I don't know, hold on a minute. Actually, people don't have the social skills to, to try this or even do this. Mm. But everyone is so antisocial these days. Everyone's on their phone, social media. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, this year, I'm going to do that. 
I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna try flight the flight there. So I've made a promise to myself, I'm gonna try four countries this year and I'm gonna fly out and I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna mm. fly out and I'm just gonna go. I don't care. Um that's the promise I made myself this year. Um, yeah. I'm with them, hopefully. Hopefully just, uh, next yeah. week they'll get back to me. Cool, cool, yeah. Just to push back, uh, I can tell you from experience the feelings you have after somebody's, uh, somebody is like, nah, nah, this guy, nah. And ooh, this is this guy. Ay, ay, ay. The mm. feelings you have inside yourself after that is completely different world. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.